We are in Manhattan today. We are outside of the Shamrock practice facility because we got our first in-person look at K-State's 2024 football team. It wasn't a lot. I told everybody we were going to be body language doctors today. We got to see some stretching, and we got to see some of the early parts of practice, the first seven periods, just quick five minutes. And probably the most notable thing is that we didn't get to see a lot in terms of what people maybe would have wanted us to see because we didn't see Avery Johnson or any back throw a single ball that hit the hands of a receiver. We saw some running backs, we saw some tight ends, but we didn't even get to see the quarterback to receiver connection. Uh, so what what is the most notable thing that you saw today from stuff that was actually on the field? We'll talk about individual players and how they look and everything after that. Uh, I think that the most notable thing that we saw on the field was just that K-State was playing some stuff close to the vest. I mean, you talked about no receivers caught a ball. I mean, I can raise you one of them. We only saw four offensive linemen out there at a time. So it, it was a very low-key kind of keeping it uh, everything close to the vest. The one thing that I will say, though, that was interesting and something that you notice every time that you come to a K-State open practice, there's not a lot of, like, downtime. It's You're out there, and they go, and they go for – that five minute period then they sprint to the next station that they're at and they go again it's like there's no downtime there are lots of high energy i mean we're body language doctors today so it was, it was good energy uh i i, I guess the other notable thing because this isn't just about like one specific player but we didn't see anybody off to the side not practicing today so i think that that's yep. something that should be really highlighted yeah the, the only player really that was notable in terms of any limitations maybe was DJ Giddens was wearing the non-contact jersey. Defensively, two guys that did see the field last year, Colby McAllister and Nigel Thomas, they were also in those on the defensive side of the ball. But for the most part, now you're only two days into it, but everybody seemed healthy for the most part. Before we go any further, I want to remind everybody, I don't know if you've forgotten, but K-State is playing in Ireland next year. We heard earlier today before we got started, K-State's SID Ryan Lackey, he's going to go to Ireland later this month, I think, for the game that's taking place there this year, Florida State and Georgia Tech, to kind of see, okay, how's that week and everything go week zero. If you want to go to Ireland to watch the Cats play the Cyclones next year, you can join the Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season and the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, an exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more game day hospitality packages packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your packages now at catstoireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So a good way for everybody to start planning now if you're going to go to Ireland next year, because if you're like me, uh, you also might need a passport. Uh, in addition to figuring out how do you get across the Atlantic Ocean to a country you've never been to before. So that's all the things that you can get figured out and you can do at cats to ireland.com we're almost a year out now if you if you yeah. really want to kind of get everything honed in i know that uh for some people it's their first time to ireland like me you yeah i, I don't think dy's been to ireland either it would be my first time out of the country next year so uh <laughs> my my wife hates that i'm not interested in international travel but uh so she's probably rolling her eyes that i'm finally going to do it and it's to go to a college football game but in terms of college football and the stuff that people actually care about Let's dive into some more of the things that we saw today, individually speaking, with the players out there. This was kind of the first look for some guys, for us in person, to see them not full pads because they weren't wearing pants, but they had the shoulder pads, they had the helmets on. You could kind of get a feel for what their size looks like on the field. Let's just start on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, two quarterbacks that are new to the roster, Blake Barnett and Taquan Roberson, the, the UConn transfer. Uh, what did you make of your first looks of them? Uh, I really liked how Blake Barnett looked. I mean, he looks like a guy that could potentially play if they really need him to. He's big. He's like 220, 230 pounds, 6'1", 6'2". And he's very, very fast. And I think the, the notable thing with him was kind of that he was around Avery Johnson all day and was kind of that second quarterback taking reps. I know with Taquan Roberson, he's only been – this is his second practice ever at K-State, so he's probably a little bit behind. But it is noteworthy that uh, it, it appears, at least, that Blake Barnett has passed Jacob Knuth. But uh, Roberson looked good, too. Uh, you pointed out that he is a gloved quarterback on the left hand, which yeah. I, I, I like. I don't I don't like two gloves. Give me one glove on the left, call it good. 
Uh, but he he looked good. He can throw he can throw a pretty good ball from what we saw. But I mean, it, we didn't really see much throwing. Yeah, I think that that was probably one of the the more notable offensive things that that you and I looked at was we started thinking, huh? I wonder if this means that you know we we talked about it last year before the season had started and everything when it came to you know is Avery Johnson moving up past Jake Rubley? Like that was day one observation last year. Like hmm, and then the way they talked about it. And then you started to think, okay, at the very least, if something catastrophic happened to Will Howard last year and you're going many, many games without your starting quarterback, who's it going to be? And it seemed like it was – you kind of got some of those same vibes today with Blake Barnett where you look at him and he looks the part. He looks built really well for a true freshman quarterback. We know that he's got the athleticism and the speed. And then the fact that he was with Avery Johnson all day and he was getting you know, whatever – reps you could take away from it but the reps that he was getting it was with guys that are going to be towards the the front lines of the season where he was getting the first offensive lineman out there the running backs that he was with he was with what we would assume was two and three on the depth chart with Dylan Edwards and Joe Jackson because again DJ Giddens non-contact he was with the other guys today so you do start to think Roberson probably does still start the season as the number two but Certainly, you start to have some thoughts that he's past Knuth and Blake Barnett, or that would at least be the plan. And then there would be a scenario where you, you say, and again, you don't want to think about this if you're K-State, but it more so illustrates how Blake Barnett looks. This is yes. nothing about anybody else, but it's how Blake Barnett looks, that he could be a guy that he he could find himself as the number two by the end of the season on the depth chart. Yeah, and he is a guy, too, that with his athleticism, there is probably more of a chance that you could – potentially see him on the field later on in the season in a game where K-State really needs something or if the QB run game is something that they want to do but want to have Avery Johnson not take as many hits you can always run Blake Barnett which I think would be kind of interesting and I think that that is something that could be explored later on in the year but I think that it would be Roberson to start the year at QB2 but that'll be a battle from for what looks like the rest of the season. And and that is one of the interesting things we saw today, too, when the quarterbacks and some of the receivers, and I guess we shouldn't say we didn't see a receiver catch a pass. <laughs> Technically, by the rules, they would have been counted as passes. But when the quarterbacks, receivers, and running backs were practicing their jet sweeps, we noticed Avery and Barnett, they would hand the ball off on the sweep. Roberson and Knuth, they would toss it like the little touch pass that you see done, which is the way to do it now because it's an incomplete pass, not a fumble when you do that. But you would think, okay, that means there are going to be some situations and wrinkles where the call isn't just, okay, we faked the jet, we're giving it to a running back, or we're actually going to run it. It's you got the right quarterback in there. They're going to have an option type of play out of it. Now, in terms of other receivers that we saw out there, some of the new guys, because I know people have been talking about Jaquise Spradley Demps. Trey Davis was also out there. You talked about him today when we were in there. Like, that's a guy you just want to see on the field at some point. Uh, what, what did you make of your first looks at some of the new receivers on the roster? Uh, Jaquise Spradley Demps looked good. He looks like he is kind of in that Trey Spivey boat where he just kind of looks different than the other K-State receivers in the room where he's just big and thick and then uh like Trey Davis is a guy that you could probably want to see the field because of how fast he is he's one of the fastest guys on the team already and, and I think that as soon as he gains a little bit more weight you'll probably see him in a special teams role likely to start because could you imagine him and Dylan Edwards back there yeah. and then Dante Cephas looked pretty good as well. I mean, it, it, the receivers are hard to say what we saw because we didn't really see a lot from receivers because they were kind of hiding them, to, yeah. to be honest. They they do. It does seem like K-State is getting more and more along the lines of having receivers, though, that they look the part yes. of playing that role, which is something that, you know, for a long time now you can say K-State didn't always have more than one of those at best on the roster, so they're getting there, and then we know what these guys can do. In addition to receivers and how roles might be, one of the things we did get a little bit of a look at was four guys that were outside for one of the periods working on punt returns. Just They had the jugs machine shooting them up in the air. Those guys, probably not a surprise to many because it was Dylan Edwards, it was Keegan Johnson, it was Sterling Lockett, who we've talked a lot about. But Jace Brown was also back there with them, which we discussed it. That's not really shocking, but it's one of those that goes, hmm, okay, interesting to note that they do have Jace Brown back there. Um, I don't think Jace Brown would be the one, two, or three in that crew, um, but it is an option where they 
obviously want to have him ready, and those seem like your four clear cut. Those guys are returning kicks and punts this year. Yeah, the, those guys are probably the the leaders of the clubhouse, and it, and it makes sense. I mean, with Sterling Lockett, it's just I feel like it's just in his blood. Yeah. And then the, the other three are probably your most explosive players on offense that have some experience because you probably don't want to put a true freshman back there in game one. So so I think that that's probably kind of what's going on there because I, I mean you look at. Keegan Johnson, really explosive when he gets the ball. Jace Brown, you know what he can do. And Dylan Edwards, you know what he can do. So you, you want those guys to get as many touches as you can, especially out in the open field. Yeah. All right, let's uh, shift sides of the ball, go defensively. Defense didn't give us a lot out there because uh, you would look at the offense and like, okay, they're actually doing some things. There's more movement. Defense, there was a lot of actual hands-on coaching going out there, guys standing, listening to Joe Klanderman, Buddy Wyatt, whoever you want out there. The linebackers, Steve Standard was giving it to him today. He was he was wanting perfection out of everybody. It didn't matter if you were new to the team or if you were Austin Moore, you were getting it out there. Uh but one of the first observations that you mentioned defensively when we were watching those guys was Jordan Riley and his size. Yeah, I really liked how Jordan Riley looked. He's a lot bigger in pads than I, I think that I envisioned. Uh, he is very similar uh, size-wise, not not quite the same length, but size-wise to VJ Payne. And, and that, that just shows again that I think that all three of those guys could be NFL guys adding Marquis Siegel, who who did drop an interception yeah, I was gonna, that, that, yeah. we, that we saw. I was going to say, I was over watching the linebackers, and I come back over, and I see Joe Klanderman rifling balls to, uh, t- to the safeties, and Drew regrets to inform me that Marquis Siegel just had one bounce off of his hands. I was like, well, did Clandy throw a bad ball? And Drew started to say yes, but he meant it in the sense of a quarterback throwing a bad ball, which is a good ball for a DB <laughs> And uh, he said, yeah, basically it was like writing the numbers for Siegel. So I did not get that on video. So I just, you know. I'm, it never happened. It never happened. I'm looking out for my boy Stone Hands. I think I'm, I think I'm on, you know, nickname basis with him at this point. I think we're cool after media day in Las Vegas. Uh, anything else from the defense stand out to you today, even though, I mean, there wasn't a ton. And I, it should be noted, the offense, a bunch of prima donnas. They were inside, in the shade. It was Really hot in there, but it was like 20 degrees cooler than the guys that were outside. So the defense was outside, but uh, anything else from the defense that you took away? I, I think that the the takeaway for the defense is probably that they got to do more hands-on coaching because they have so much more experience at a lot of positions where they can probably go one-on-one with a few different guys to kind of let them know what to do. Where on offense, there's a lot of inexperience at certain positions, so you probably want to get them more like live reps like we saw. So, so I think that that is probably the other main takeaway because, like, like you said, like we didn't see the defense do a whole lot. Uh, it was mostly just like individual drills instead of like lining up and going like yeah. we saw the offense do. You also mentioned Malcolm Alcorn Crowder and his Yo, size. And yeah, that. oh yeah, he looks really, really good, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a role somewhere on K State's defense that's that's probably good news for everybody here because as we joked about yesterday you know it used to be could you play tackle but offensive tackle now it's getting to be for k-state can he play defensive tackle so good to hear that there might be another guy in that room to join uso sayamalo and damian neil leo yeah that i think that he might start as that third d tackle but i i could see him being the second and even splitting Uso by the end of the season at that first team. Yeah. Uh, any other observations or notes from our first day of looking at the Cats for practice, uh, their second day? Uh, honestly, it just this isn't even an observation, but it felt good to just kind of watch football again. Like it, You don't realize how much that you really miss it until you come here for the first practice, and we didn't really see anything in the seven periods, and we're like, huh. This was really fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun talking football outside of a football facility instead of in my basement. And we're 30 <laughs> days away from kickoff of the Cats and UT Martin right here uh, at K State Bill Steiner Family Stadium, just behind us here too. So yeah, cause that was a great segue. Well, you know, just trying to do what I can do to wrap things up uh, as I watch traffic just go by on Kimball right now. Uh, beautiful piece of the state right here. I'm just admiring the. It also feels good because we're in the shade. Like, I would keep going for 30 more minutes, but only if we stayed here. If we moved 20 feet to our left and we get into the parking lot, I'd no, thanks. be getting out of here in a heartbeat. So, all right, that'll do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more. I actually have 
some basketball things that I want to get to tomorrow. So we'll talk a little bit of basketball uh, tomorrow on Friday when we discuss the Cats because you've gotten your football stuff in now. And uh, if anything else comes up along the way, football-wise, you know where to go. Head over to On3, find kstateonline.com. Drew and DY will have you covered. And we'll have more from K-State practice from today up on the YouTube as well. So not just this, but we'll also throw in some of the videos so you get a little bit of a look at what went on. You may look at it and say, wow, this confirms everything I thought, or I don't know what the heck is going on. That's okay. It's only day two of uh, fall camp, and uh, this team, at the end of the day, you look around and you still think that this is going to be a good football team. The, the vibes that we felt at Big 12 Media Day in Las Vegas, you didn't see or hear anything that would make you think, oh, there's a little bit of concern there. Now, it, it feels like this, again, this whole program is in sync right now, and that's a credit to everything Chris Kleiman has done going on year six now. Okay, Drew has nothing else. He just totally agrees with me. I'm 100% yeah. right. So, all right, that'll do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Reminder, cats to Ireland.com if you want to go watch the Cats beat the clones down next year in Ireland. So we are out of here. Thanks for watching K-State Online.